Alexander788 here. It is time for the answers to the Q&A. Before we get started, I wanted to make a couple announcements. First of all, I want to let everybody know that the first video review of 2017 will go up on the 15th of January. Now, I know that's a little bit of a break, but I need the extra time to work on the video. I'm reviewing something kind of big, so I just need the extra time. Also, I'm working on a lot of other things that should you know, go up at about that same time. I've got a special video that I'm working on that will go up probably that same week. Uh, I'm working on a new intro for 2017. I'm trying to update the intro uh, once a year, and so that should be new. So there's a lot that I'm working on, and I just need the extra time. I'm not taking a vacation. I'm just putting the extra effort into the videos. So I want to let everybody know that the first video for 2017 will go up on the 15th. Also, if you support this channel on Patreon, I have some special announcements specifically for patrons. So if you are a patron, look for special announcements early in January. So let's answer these questions. There were a lot of questions this year, uh, so the answers will probably have to be in a two-parter, two videos. Um, also, uh, there's a lot of activity in my house right now, so the probability that I will be interrupted while I'm doing this is high. Also, uh, some of you asked questions specifically of Mrs. Hooded Cobra Commander 788, so I'll save those to the end and I'll bring her in so she can answer your questions. So let's get it rolling. So let's answer these questions, and these are not in any particular order. So our first question comes from Mark Sardoni. Uh, Mark says, uh, HCC 788, first, thanks for all the hard work you put into your awesome reviews. You rock. Thank you. Uh, my question is, aside from reviewing G.I. Joe toys, do you think you'll do some reviews of some of the other merchandise available in the 80s, like the model kits, train set, or choose your own adventure style, uh, style books that are, were available? I know you've touched on some of the comics, and I'm still hoping you are able to get back to them someday. Me too. Um, do you have any interest in any of the other non-toy tie-ins uh, from the classic era? And the short answer is, yes, I'm interested in doing that, and I think that's fun. I don't have any specific plans to do that, um, but uh, if I did it, it would be like just a, a special uh, special video. Um, but those things are fun, and we have occasionally, you know, gone off in little different directions uh, on these tangents and just kind of seen what's out there, and that's fun. Um, so I would like to do that every once in a while. But um, on the other hand, I want to make sure that I stay focused on my main project, uh, which is reviewing the 82 to 94 line. That is a big enough task as it is, uh, so I want to make sure I keep focused on that. But the occasional sidetrack is fun, and so I'll try to do that kind of thing from time to time as I have the time to do it. Uh, so thanks for that question, Mark. Now, next question comes from Christopher Hilt. Uh, Christopher says, I'm pretty much a font of G.I. Joe information myself. I wanted to pose a question that might not be easy to answer, so here goes. Uh, the character Starduster, do you consider him an actual Joe? And if so, what year was he originally released? Most sources say uh, 1987. However, I have a pic of a Hasbro ad that places him coming out in the, with the 1984 line of Joes. Also, some publications um, also list him as a mail-away for that year as well. What's the truth? That's a really interesting question. First of all, I do consider Starduster to be uh, a real Joe. Um, he, you know, he was a mail-away and he had a file card and he had a character and, you know, he didn't appear in any of the media, but, you know, a lot of Joes didn't appear in any of the media, but they were still Joes. Um, but as for when he was released, I think the most reliable sources consider 1987 to be like the earliest, but if you have information that he might have been released in 1984, um, I think that's really interesting, and if you're able to, I mean, if you have that, um, like if you have scans of Hasbro catalogs or publications that show him being released with the 1984 line, man, I would love to see that. That would really shed a lot of light on that subject, so if you if you have those, um, I think I would like to see them and the rest of the community as well, uh, because that would really shed some light on kind of a murky history on Starduster. Um, next question uh, comes from uh, Ian Polkluda. Um, Ian, uh, it says, uh, what was the one figure you picked up as an older collector that you really wanted or had to have? Also, uh, what character uh, on Red Dawn was your favorite? 
Uh, you know, I think the one figure that I really had to have was the first figure that I got as an adult collector, and that was the 1982 Straight Arm Breaker. And I had to have that one, and I wanted to start with that one because that was my first G.I. Joe figure when I was a kid, way back in 1982. So, you know, I figured it's best to start from the beginning. And so I was really excited to get that one. I was really proud to have it. Um, and so, yeah, that was one that I had to get. Now, as for my favorite character on Red Dawn, I always, you know, when I watched that movie as a kid, I always liked Patrick Swayze's character because I always thought he was just a great leader. Looking back on it now, it's a little bit on the creepy side. It's, he's a, certainly a natural leader, but um, his band of uh, child soldiers are almost cult-like, and it's, it's a little bit creepy now looking back at it. The movie sort of uh, glamorizes some things that we consider to be not too good when it's done in other countries. Um, so now, when I watch Red Dawn, it has a completely different meaning to me. It's still a really good movie and a very interesting movie, and in a lot of ways a very honest movie. Uh, but um, I, back in the day, I just saw it as a, you know, this great action-adventure war movie, and now I see a little bit more of a subversive message in it, um, and it has a whole new level to it. Uh, next question, uh, Marco uh, Quintanar asks, uh, what do you think of the 2002 through 2005 G.I. Joe series? And I have to be honest with you, I don't know a lot about the 2002 to 2005 series. Um, I really mostly focused on 1982 to 1994. Um, I have seen some cool stuff that came out after 1994. Uh, in fact, a lot of the stuff that came out after 1994 is a lot cooler than the stuff from 93, 94. But I'm trying to stay focused on my collecting goal and not get too sidetracked with, uh, with things that are outside of the scope of my collection. So those things, I, I, I'm interested in seeing them. I think Some of them I think are really cool, but it's just not something that I'll be collecting because, again, I'm trying to stay focused. I'm trying to have my collection you know, have a limited scope and not just keep growing and growing and keep adding in more stuff. So I think that's all I can really say about it. Uh, uh, Joseph Kristovich, um, he says, in your mind, what would a new G.I. Joe cartoon done the right way uh, look like? Would it be on Cartoon Network? Uh, what age group should it go for, and should uh, new should have new characters or have the same Joes and Cobras we know and love? Uh, that's an interesting question. I, don't, I haven't thought a lot about it, but I think sort of answering it in, re it in reverse, um, I am an advocate of recreating G.I. Joe for the, new, the next generation rather than uh, releasing another iteration of 1980s Joe. So I don't think uh, G.I. Joe for the next generation is going to look like our G.I. Joe. So probably not the same Joes and probably not Cobra. Maybe just a totally different structure and completely different idea. Uh, but something that would appeal more to kids today uh, than, you know, 80s Joes. Um, so um, I think that it should target a younger... Well, okay. Um, what age group? Um, Pre-teen, um, but um, not, not like five to six years old. Probably like age uh, seven to uh, ten. 7 to 11, that age group. A little bit older, they're not playing with the little kiddie toys anymore, but they haven't necessarily quite moved on to, you know, exclusively playing on video games. Some of those kids that age may still like to have, you know, plastic toys. So um, you're, you're looking at uh, probably, yeah, r around age 7 to 10, that kind of age range. Um, old enough to understand a little bit more, but still enjoying playtime with toys. Um, and see, what would uh, G.I. Joe Cartoon Done Right look like? Um, would it be on Cartoon Network? Um, I, I can't say what it would look like, but I just, I mean, I love the G.I. Joe media that's been created recently that's aimed more at adults. Uh, I like that, and I think that, you know, it, it's great. It's done really well. Um, but I just don't think that would appeal to the age group that you need to get uh, in order to have G.I. Joe move forward and have its next generation of fans. So uh, I, I'm 
not really sure about that. I'm more sure about, or I have stronger feelings about what it shouldn't be than what it should be. I don't think it should be adult collector oriented. I think it should be kid oriented. Um, and I think it ought to be something totally new and not just a rehash of the stuff that we grew up with. Uh, next question uh, from Yoda Hulk. Uh, Yoda Hulk asks, what is your favorite Nine Inch Nails song? My favorite Nine Inch Nails song comes from the EP Burn and the song is Wish. Uh, a lot of critics think that that um, album is just too harsh and almost unlistenable, but I just really like the raw nature of all of the songs on Burn um, and Wish in particular. It's just so raw and, and harsh and uh, just very straightforward, simple but um, just uh, it, it had a great appeal to me. I like some of the later stuff too. I mean, you, you know, you, the downward spiral had more texture to it. It was more complex. Uh, but the whole album burn was just just uh, raw anger. Um, and uh, at the time, that appealed to me a great deal. So that's my favorite Nine Inch Nails song, I think. Um, Soundwave NL uh, 1977 asks, uh, what's your favorite cartoon episode and why? Well, um, uh, Worlds Without End is the two-parter. If, if I'm allowed to have two, uh, Worlds Without End, the two-parter, is my favorite. It's my favorite because it is the most honest depiction of war that we got in the G.I. Joe cartoon series, where we saw, you know, real aftermath of war. Uh, and that's something that I wanted to see at the time when I was a kid and, and still today when I look at the G.I. Joe cartoon series, the whole theme, thing seems really sanitized. And um, I just, there, there's something a little dishonest about it. Uh, having soldiers fighting a war in which there are no consequences. Uh, well, in the Worlds Without End two-parter, there were consequences, and, and I can appreciate that. And as a kid, I appreciated them uh, trusting me that I could handle that and that I, you know, could, um, you know, absorb that and I wouldn't be, like, psychologically scarred by it. It treated kids, you know, uh, as, as being mature enough to handle that kind of subject matter. So that would be my favorite. Uh, next, by They Gone, uh, asks, what is the most you paid for a vehicle or figure? Well, I'm not counting the uh, USS flag because that is neither a vehicle nor a figure. It is a playset. So the most I play, paid for a vehicle or a figure is about $150. And I'm not going to tell you which one it was. Um, okay, Hellback asks, um, who's your favorite G.I. Joe figure, Joe or Cobra? Well, Stalker version 1 uh, is the figure that is my favorite and has the most sentimental value to me. Uh, it's not the best figure, but it's my personal favorite. Uh, so, next question. Uh, Bebo asks, I score a lot of my Joes from Swap Meets or eBay. Uh, where do you score most of your Joe stuff from? Well, a variety of places. Um, I, uh, for one thing, I mean, a lot of uh, viewers have sent stuff to me, and that just, I mean, blows me away every time. Um, that's been invaluable. I, um, I can't thank everyone enough for doing that. Um, I do pick up things on eBay from time to time when I find what I think is a good deal. Um, I do. I don't have a lot. There aren't a lot of local toy vendors here. Um, you know where I live, but there was a um, a vintage toy mall that opened recently, and it has some Joe stuff, a lot of stuff I already have. But I try to keep an eye out there, uh, just in case they have something new come in that I can use. Um, so, and, and sometimes I'll get um, stuff from folks on Facebook uh, in you know like Trade Your Joe's Facebook group, um, if it's somebody that you know I trust and I think is a reputable seller. Uh, so a lot of different places. I kind of look for, you know, what's the best deal, what's the most reasonable price, um, you know, and will it actually help me complete something uh, so that I can get something ready to review. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. And, you know, I'll go wherever I need to go to, you know, find a good deal and deal with reputable sellers. Next question by uh, Fragminian. 
Fragminion asks, um, if you could own a, G a Cobra vehicle to drive around your town, what would it be? Same for G.I. Joe. Well, if it were a Cobra vehicle, um, I would want it to be the His Tank. Uh, and if it's a G.I. Joe vehicle, I would want it to be the Vamp. Now, I know the Vamp is kind of a plain vehicle, but I've always kind of thought it would be cool to, to have a Vamp to drive around. I mean, just... You know, it's not spectacular, but it's just a, a distinctly G.I. Joe. The green and the gun turret on the back and the G.I. Joe logos on it and everything. Uh, I, just, I just think that would be fun to tool around with. Now, I could say, you know, something like the Sky Striker, but I don't know how to fly a jet. So uh, I'll stick with the ground vehicles. At least, you know, I can drive those. Imperial Destroyer asks, will you do more vintage Star Wars reviews? Also, do you have any tips for new collectors? Um, I don't have any plans to do vintage Star Wars reviews right now. I had fun doing them. Not everybody had fun watching them, but I enjoyed them. Uh, maybe someday, but I don't have any such plans right now. Um, and uh, tips for new collectors, be patient. Uh, don't get in a hurry. Slow down. Learn about what you're getting before you get it. Uh, study. Look up references online. Uh, look at uh, prices to make sure that you're not overpaying for it. Uh, don't be afraid to let something go if the price is out of your range. Be patient. It's all out there. It'll still be out there. You'll find eventually find what you're looking for for a reasonable price um, and it'll be in the condition that you want. You just have to be patient. Don't get in any hurry um, and that'll help you avoid costly mistakes. Um, next question, uh, Diego Borges. Uh, asks, uh, do you uh, or intend to have any international Joe, like Commandos Amasau from Brazil, Commandos Ariocos from Argentina? Um, I heard the Brazilian Cobra de Aso Steel Cobra is a must have for Joe collectors worldwide. Well, somebody did send me a fun school grunt which I thought was very amusing. I think that's my only international show, and I don't intend to get any, and it's not because they're not awesome. I've seen a lot of these, and uh, in particular the Steel Cobra, which is really cool, and I can see why a lot of people want it. But again, I'm trying to keep my collection limited in scope to US releases only. Uh, and that's not easy to do, because I've seen a lot of international stuff that I just, I just want. Uh, but I've, I've refrained. I'm not going after them uh, just because, again, I want my collection to be limited. I don't want it to just keep growing and take over my whole house. Um, but cool stuff, but, but I probably won't be going for that. I won't be collecting those things. Next question uh, by Wes Roth. Uh, are you still interested in that possible exploration of Kenner slash uh, Jurassic crossover I proposed, or is that on the back burner, uh, back burner idea for the time being? Uh, as always, great content. I'm looking forward to another year of HCC 788. Thank you. Uh, as for the project, uh, it's on a little bit of a back burner, and it's not because I'm not interested in doing it. I think it will be fun. It's just that um, as I'm working out my schedule for 2017, it's still in flux. Things still keep uh, changing, and I have to, I'm still adjusting it, and I just don't know when I can do that. Um, it's going to be really tricky to get uh, the things done in 2017 that I want to get done. So uh, I'm going to keep that in mind um, as I, you know, have uh, time windows open up, and I'll, you know, I'll definitely consider that. I just don't know when I'll be able to do it, but it's a fun idea. Uh, next question by Zed D. Kaizoku uh, asks, uh, don't, uh, don't you have a wish list on Amazon or eBay uh, to send you uh, future G.I. Joe figures or vehicles? Hopefully we would like to see um, uh, Colonel Courage because uh, no one did his review yet, toy and appearances. You know, I don't have an Amazon or eBay wish list, and why don't I? Why don't I exactly? I don't know why I don't. Uh, maybe I should get one. Um, and as for Colonel Courage, you know, I, I did get Colonel Courage in that uh, 90s box, uh, and he's really cool, and I look forward to doing that one. Um, it's just, again, like everything else, I'm going to do everything from 82 to 94. I'm going to get to all of it. 
Uh, it's just a question of when, and that's a much more difficult question to answer. Uh, Joe Eversoll uh, asks, uh, Cobra initia initiates a surprise attack, and it's just you and three fellow G.I. Joe teammates pinned down with no air support. You'll fight your way free or die trying. With which three Joe teammates would you want alongside as you make your stand? Assuming you're not with Cobra, of course. If so, uh, where would your alliance lean, Destro or Cobra Commander? Okay, which three Joes would I want? Uh, Snake Eyes, Stalker, and Storm Shadow. And Storm Shadow did become a Joe. He counts. Uh, but I would want them because of their of their history of working together as a team. Uh, not only not only are they formidable soldiers individually, but as a team, uh, they work really well together, and they would be unstoppable altogether. Um, and so, Destro or Cobra Commander? I think I would side with Destro. I mean, Destro is not a good guy. I mean, he's uh, fueled by his own greed, and that's not a good thing. But um, his motivations are less cult-like than Cobra Commander. Cobra Commander's—he's, you know, he's crazy. Um, Destro is um, self-interested, and even though that isn't necessarily a good thing, at least it's a bit more predictable. So I think I would probably go with Destro. Eritful uh, says, Hi, HC788. Hi. Uh, I want to ask, what is your relationship with Transformers? Uh, did you have toys as a kid? Uh, why did you thought G.I. Joe was better? Uh, do you have Transformers in your collection? And what's your opinion of the 86 movie? Uh, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Um, okay, Transformers. You know, I did have some Transformers as a kid, and I, for the most part, I liked them. Uh, in fact, I'd probably consider Transformers to be in my top three favorite uh, toy lines from the 80s. But I never quite liked them as much as G.I. Joe. They, uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, they tended to run a bit kind of expensive, so I couldn't get a lot of them. We never had n as many Transformers as G.I. Joe, not by a long shot. I mean, not even close. Uh, also, in when they were transformed in their robot mode, they didn't look like I imagined them from seeing them on the cartoon. Now, I liked the cartoon series. In fact, I would venture to say I liked the cartoon series for Transformers more than I liked the G.I. Joe cartoon series. Which brings us to the 1986 uh, Transformers movies movie. Uh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I liked it at the time. I still like it. Uh, it has drama. Uh, you know, you get really invested in the characters. Um, you know, since... Um, since Optimus Prime dies in that movie, then it really raises the stakes uh, for the heroes. Uh, and uh, it's just, I thought it was really well done. I know there are a lot of complaints about the movie. You know, ki kids cried when, um, when Optimus Prime died. And I'm like, you know, good. You know, a movie is supposed to move you. It's supposed to make you feel emotions. That's not a bad thing. Um, and I just thought it was done well. I liked it a lot more than... Um, than the G.I. Joe movie that came out the following year. Um, and again, it kind of comes down to only, uh, um, the Transformers movie, uh, it was shocking, I guess, but it's because it gave you a more honest portrayal of war. You know, in war, you know, people die, and not just some, you know, side characters that you don't care about. Sometimes the people that you really care about die, and the Transformers movie showed you that. And the G.I. Joe movie, despite, you know, being a, a, a cartoon about actual soldiers in actual war, still couldn't give us that honest a portrayal of its own subject matter. So, yeah, I like the 86 Transformers movie. All right. Mike Horsley uh, says, as a collector, I know one's collection is directly related to disposable income versus space to put it all. My question is, do you have a logical stopping point, or is there no end in sight? I ask this because as my own collection grows, I'm finding it difficult to display slash store my Joes. I can relate to that. Um, and there is a lot more I still want to get, but I have no idea where I'm going to put it. Is this a common problem or just me? And also, JoeFan82, hello, um, says, uh, I'd like to know the answer to this one as well. Okay. Here is the answer. Um, I am specifically focused on G.I. Joe American releases from 1982 to 1994, and that is it. 
I'm not getting any other toy lines. I'm not. I'm. Uh, although I do have some GI Joe items from outside that uh, date range, I'm not focused on that stuff, uh, and I'm really trying to only get the vintage toy line, and that's it. So there is a logical stopping point, and for the most part, I've been pretty disciplined about about sticking to that. I'm not going, I mean, I know, I see there's cool stuff out there. You know, there's some cool stuff that was released this year, but I'm not getting any of that. That's outside the range and the scope of my collection. So I'm sticking with my plan, um, and that's how I'm trying to keep the collection from just growing exponentially and getting out of control. Uh, there comes a point in collecting when you just get so much that it's it's not fun anymore. It just becomes a burden, and that's what I don't want to happen. Um, so space, yes, I'm running out of space, but you know I can manage that uh, within the scope of my collection. I think I can manage that. Um, but if I started getting like international stuff and modern stuff and started throwing all that in, um, I would have I would be, it'd be hopeless. I would have no chance. It would just all end up in boxes stacked in the garage somewhere. And that, why would why what's the point of that? Um, so I want to be able to collect things. I also want to be able to display them and see them and, and pick them up and touch them. I don't want them to be just stored in boxes. So. That's the scope of my collection. I would guess that I am about a third of the way done with that uh, collecting goal. Uh, still quite a ways to go, and some big items I still have to get. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm making progress. I'm working on it. So um, anyway, that's it. That's the answer, and I'm sticking with that. Uh, next question, uh, Brian Reese uh, says, "What are your three favorite toy lines as a kid besides GI Joe?" Um, okay, uh, Transfor uh, Okay, well, Transformers in there, but it's probably Star Wars first. Uh, Star Wars, you know, I was collecting that before G.I. Joe even existed. Yeah, Transformers in there, f again, for a short time. Uh, we really liked it, but, you know, I kind of got a little frustrated with it. And then Mask, uh, Kenner's Mask toy line, I really liked it a lot. Um, it was in a different scale. And those toys tend to run a little bit high, but I did enjoy playing with them, so that would be probably my top three. Chromius uh, asks, is there a holy grail you are looking for, be it a figure that you have trouble finding, or something larger like the Defiant? Right now, my grail would be the 1982 Cobra Missile Command Headquarters, for what I hope are obvious reasons. Man, I, that was, um, you know, it's, it, of course it's not, a huge, it's not a big playset, uh, but that's something that, man, I, I just, I would love to get. Um, it doesn't have a high priority right now. Um, obviously, it's very expensive, and I have other things that are much more urgent that I need to get, things that I'll be reviewing in the near future, so I gotta make sure I have those and they're complete. But um, someday, I'm gonna get the Missile Command Headquarters and that will be a big red letter day in my collection. Uh, so that's my grail right now. Man, that is one that I would really love to get my hands on. Uh, Mark5 says, uh, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Well, is that an African swallow or a European swallow? You know, you have to know these things. Uh, Thomas Dodson says, have you picked up the Cobra Terradrome yet? I cannot tell you. This is the one question that I can't ask. and it. it Really, if anybody asked about the Defiant Space Shuttle um, or like the Mobile Command Center, I can't answer those questions. And the reason is um, I want to make it an annual tradition to review something big uh, as the first review of every year. Like last year was the USS Flag. This year I'm going to review something really big, but I don't want you to know what it is. I want it to be a surprise. Maybe it'll be the Defiant Shuttle Complex, maybe it'll be the Terradrome, maybe it'll be the Mobile Command Center or the Rolling Thunder or one of those really big playsets. So I won't even tell you if I have them yet because I don't want to spoil the surprise. So I can't answer the question of whether I've picked up the Terradrome yet and or the Defiant Shuttle Complex or anything like that. So sorry, sorry, have to preserve the surprise. Uh, next question, GP Gamer says, what other, what other toy lines uh, do you like? Uh, also, do you have any kids? Um, I, I like other toy lines, um, you know, like, like Transformers. 
Um, I kind of kind of uh, developing an affinity to uh, the old master of the, masters of the universe toys. Although I'm not collecting them, uh, I do like them, but I'm not collecting anything other than GI Joe right now. Like I said, keeping the scope of the collection limited. Um, do I have any kids? Yes, I have two daughters. Uh, one's a teenager, and the other will be 10 years old uh, here in about a month. Mokai Music asks, which Joe or Cobra do you think has the best music collection? Uh, maybe rock and roll, just because we know he was in a rock and roll band, so I figure he probably has a good uh, record collection. Uh, that's all I can think of right now. Rock and roll. Uh, Chapman Film Films. Uh, Will you review uh, that Tomahawk, or when will you review that Tomahawk helicopter? Why don't you love me? Just kidding, LOL. I didn't say I didn't love you. And uh, as far as when I will review the Tomahawk helicopter, I would like to know that too. I am trying to fit that into 2017, and it's not easy. Um, it's one of my favorite vehicles, but re finding the time to review it has not been easy, so Hopefully soon. Hopefully. James Strickland uh, says, What's your, What is your favorite G.I. Joe reviewer uh, you worked with uh, this year? Oh, that's not fair. You know, I, I love all the guys that I did collaborations with. And uh, just a reminder, I collaborated with uh, FormBX257 and Half the Battle and JoeFan82 uh, and G.I. Joeberg. And they were all great and a lot of fun to work with. Uh, so I don't really have a favorite, but I can tell you uh, the one that I was most excited to get the chance to work with, uh, and that was FormBX257, just because I've been a fan of his for so long, and so it's like getting to work with one of your heroes, so that was very exciting for me. Um, Newcastle6666 says, can you send me a Rattler, please? Well, no way! I can't send you a Rattler. Don't you know those are poison? I mean, one minute you're a fat, healthy man, and then the next minute, boom, you're dead meat. They're poison. I can't send you a poison snake. That's a weird request, man. Next question, Clayton6. Do you think we'll, there will be a new animated series within the next two years? It's possible, but things would have to change dramatically to make that possible. So I don't see that happening right now, but yeah, it's maybe, um, but not very likely. <laughs>